This year's Aero India show has garnered significantly more attention than previous years, mainly because two stealth fighters were showcased in the same airspace for the first time, and that too from rival countries. This highlights just how significant Aero India has become. The display of the F-35 and the Su-57 was not merely for show, as I discussed in my previous videos, both the US and Russia are very serious about exporting their state-of-the-art fighters to India. Now, the US president even stated that exporting the F-35 might be on the table as part of broader defense cooperation with India. However, when it comes to the F-35, the Indian Air Force has said that although they are open-minded about such a deal, they are not overly excited about acquiring the F-35. This is because the IF recognizes several trade-offs that could render the F-35 less effective in critical situations. India would still have a state-of-the-art fifth-gen fighter, but its full potential could be limited by the need to operate within a US-controlled ecosystem for logistics, software updates, and weapons integration. In that situation, while the indigenous missile might offer superior performance against a specific threat, the F-35 would be unable to deploy it. As a result, the aircraft's combat capability could be severely limited, rendering it practically useless in that critical role compared to more flexible platforms like the Rafale or Su-30 MKI, which can more easily integrate a broader array of weaponry. The F-35's advanced sensor fusion is designed to collect, process, and share vast amounts of real-time data with friendly forces through US-controlled networks. If India operates within this framework, any disruption or deliberate withholding of data by the US could lead to delays in receiving crucial battlefield information, thereby hampering the F-35's ability to provide a complete picture of the battle space and reducing situational awareness and coordination with other assets. Many US allies have accepted these trade-offs in exchange for advanced capabilities. However, India's historical emphasis on strategic independence is one of the reasons why it has not pursued other American fighter jets like the F-18 Super Hornets, F-15, or F-16. India has preferred platforms that allow for greater autonomy and easier integration with its indigenous technologies. That said, this does not mean the US cannot be flexible with India. Even though the idea of exporting the F-35 might seem unthinkable by US standards, especially given India's acquisition of the Russian S-400s. Remember what happened to Turkey when it procured Russian air defense systems. If the US is somehow flexible with the S-400 issue, it could also offer some operational flexibility for the F-35 under India's terms, provided India buys these fighters in significant quantities. On the other hand, Russia's offer is even sweeter. They are offering transfer of technology, local production, and even customization of the Su-57, which essentially means India can integrate its own weapon systems into the fighter, much like it did with the Sukhois. This is a strategic move by Russia. There is a valid argument that acquiring foreign stealth fighters like the F-35 or Su-57 could divert valuable financial resources, political focus, and industrial attention away from the AMCA program. Given that developing a fifth-generation aircraft requires sustained capital and research and development, channeling funds into an interim foreign acquisition might slow down investment in indigenous technology. However, there is an opposite argument that such an acquisition could actually accelerate AMCA development. Since India has never fielded a truly fifth-generation stealth fighter, operating a platform like the F-35 or even the Su-57 would expose Indian engineers and pilots to the intricacies of stealth design, sensor fusion, and network-centric warfare. The daily operational challenges, such as maintenance hurdles, software integration issues, and data sharing protocols, can provide critical feedback. These complexities take a long time to master, and without first-hand experience, it could take years or even decades to fully develop these technologies from scratch. Operating even a limited number of advanced foreign platforms can significantly shorten that learning curve. 
By gaining direct operational insights such as how systems interact under real-world conditions where maintenance bottlenecks occur, and how sensor data is integrated, Indian engineers and pilots can rapidly identify what works and what doesn't. This hands-on experience can then be fed back into the design and development process for the advanced medium combat aircraft, potentially accelerating its progress compared to starting entirely from scratch. Moreover, if India opts for the much sweeter deal, for example by acquiring the Su-57 with local production and extensive modification, it would be even better. India's local production of the MiG-21 was a formative experience. Licensed production at Hindustan Aeronautics Limited not only supplied the Indian Air Force, but also provided critical hands-on training, process improvements, and technical know-how that later helped in indigenous projects like Tejas. Even though the Tejas program has faced unprecedented delays and has at times questioned HAL's capabilities, its development taught Indian engineers valuable lessons in modern fighter design, manufacturing, and maintenance. This experience can improve production processes, boost confidence in handling complex fifth-generation technologies, and foster a culture of innovation that benefits the AMCA project. However, it is important to note that the AMCA is an entirely indigenous design with its own unique requirements, constraints, and goals. Variables such as material performance, aerodynamics and integration with other indigenous systems will still require rigorous trial and error. In my opinion, India should consider a limited foreign fifth-generation acquisition, whether from Russia or the US, to fill its immediate capability gap and act as a catalyst to accelerate AMCA development. The key is a balanced approach. Acquiring a few jets for bridging the gap is beneficial, but a large-scale procurement might risk dependency and divert resources from indigenous development. The goal should be to leverage the advanced technology and operational experience of a foreign platform without permanently sidelining or underfunding the development of an indigenous stealth fighter.